Hello, art groupies. Today I am thinking hot air balloons. Um, springtime, thinking of something colorful. Um, this is again something you can do with whatever materials you have at home. I did this one with, um, started with pencil, then I used a china pencil or china crayon. I'll show you that in a few minutes. And um, you could use crayon and then some watercolors. But if you have Sharpies or markers or colored pencils, watercolor pencils, anything, you can do this with anything. So this is just a small one and I'm gonna show you how to draw this one. And then I'm gonna show you if you don't really wanna get into painting and you wanna do a bigger drawing, I'm gonna show you also how you could do really a more detailed drawing and make it a little bit more complicated. So first though, I'm gonna show you just the simple, smaller version. But one of my inspirations is I love hot air balloons. And if you are looking um, or you wanna get some patterns or you're looking for some inspiration, go on Google and just put in hot air balloon and look at um, images and you will see tons and tons of different hot air balloon designs, which is so, so cool. And uh, I just get excited about looking at them. And um, that's something one day I'd love to see is to go to a hot air balloon festival and see uh, a whole field full of them. That would be pretty awesome. So anyway, I'm gonna move this over and get started. And if you are, hot air balloons are pretty tall. So if you have some paper, you probably wanna turn it the tall way if you're doing just one larger one. And um, I've got just a lid here that is perfect for tracing if you're wondering how to get that good shape. You put it up really, really high on your paper and I'm just gonna trace kind of like the top and sides and then I'm gonna kind of stop there. And let's see, I'm not sure if you can see that. Let me, tra that. Let me trace that a little bit darker so you can really see that. And then once you get that shape, you want to kind of just pull it down a little bit this way you can kind of curve it in a little bit. I think I curved mine in a little bit here. You can kind of curve it like a, almost like a light bulb. And then once you get that, you're just gonna go straight across. You don't need to go too far down. Um, then what you wanna do is actually start the designing of your balloon before you put any more details in because sometimes those details can get confusing. So the first thing I would do is draw right down the middle a straight line dividing the balloon in half like this. And then on either side of the balloon, you're gonna draw two slightly curved lines. You're gonna leave a little space between this one and you're gonna come over here a little bit, slightly curved. And do not worry if it's not a perfect curve. It really, once you get your designs done, you're not gonna notice. Then I'm gonna come over here a little bit again, slight curve here. And the goal is to have these sections fairly equal, but the one in the middle might be bigger, which is helps show form. Once we get this drawn, it'll help it make it feel like it's more three-dimensional. Then I'm gonna go to this side and do the same thing. And it's always harder to draw on the opposite side. Like my left side, I'm right-handed, it's always hard. But just don't worry about it. Just be easy on yourself if your lines aren't perfect, because it does not matter. And then I've got the, that done. Once you have that part done, it's really fun because you can think about how you want your seams, basically the stitching on the balloon, how you want it to look. This one, I did kind of the curvy look, curve, 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 um, which is, I think I'm gonna do a combo on this one so you kind of have a couple different ideas. So I'm gonna start here, and um, this sounds kind of silly, but I want you to think about what it's like when you are playing on the monkey bars. Um, the monkey bars, when you are going across those, you swing and connect, swing and connect, swing and connect. Same thing with your lines here. It's like making a smile that goes from one side to the other. It connects. Then I'm going to swing down and connect. Swing down and connect. And lift your pencil each time. This will help you stop what you're drawing and think about what the next step is. So swing and connect. And then you can decide how thick these little areas are gonna be. You can make some thinner sections like this one, a little thin section to kind of you know, think, plan out your color. Or you can kind of go down deeper and do some wider. And then actually on the back of this paper, I'm going to do a really quick kind of fast drawing to show you another thing that you can do for your hot air balloon. I'm gonna flip it and pretend that you can kind of trace, I kind of see my balloon on the other, from the other side. This isn't the best one. I'm gonna kind of just show you really quick. 
one other way. You can do straight lines instead of the curvy lines. But again, connect, like swing and connect. I'm gonna do a zigzag all the way. So this can be another pattern. And then actually you can reverse your zigzag and it kind of gives that little bit of a diamond look. So you might like that instead. A couple different ways. And then actually there were some hot air balloons I saw that really just didn't even do any lines. They kind of kept each section long and that can be kind of a neat look too. All right, back to the better drawing. Now that I'm here, if you what, what you need now that you have your balloon is you need your basket. So I'm gonna stretch this down really far. It's gonna feel like it's too far, but it really isn't draw my line across the bottom, and then I'm gonna kinda of draw the another line in between. Now it really looks like a light bulb, but this portion is the basket. This is the section where you would be sitting in the basket. So you wanna make a pattern here right away so that you know what's going on. A lot of times I like to do the pattern of three lines uh, vertical, three lines horizontal, but whatever you want. And then opposite. That gives a little bit of a basket weave type of look but some people like to just do like crisscrossy marks, whatever you want, it's totally fine. Then if you, you know, hot air balloons aren't in the air without people. So you probably wanna draw some really simple people. So you can get more detailed than me if you want to, but I'm gonna just kinda of do what I did before. A head with some shoulders, maybe the arms kinda of coming down at the sides. Um, I'm, sometimes I always think it's fun to add like a dog because I've, oh, speaking of dogs, I've got my dog is about to bark. Add a little dog in there. And then hot air balloons definitely need some scenery. So I'm gonna draw a line here to show the land. And then um, if it's up in the air, everything should look kind of small on the ground. So I always like to do like a little house and some trees. And trees usually are about the same height or a little taller than a house. So they're not usually too huge. And there's lot, usually lots of trees. I'm doing really fast trees. Just little um, zigzaggy trees for evergreens. And might do a door, might do a chimney. Then I'm going to add another landline here. And then somewhere on that landline, I would add another house. But when you start your house, you want your the bottom of your house smaller because things that go back get smaller. That helps you give that sense of space. And space is one of our elements of art that I want you to practice. So um, when you're doing something like near and far like this, this is definitely perfect to show like a space. Before it was just a floating hot air balloon with no context of where it was. And really quick, we've got ourselves a little village down here. And I could even do another landline here. You just kind of fit them in behind because obviously it's further away. And then you can even kind of do some silly little, like teeny tiny little houses. And the more trees you add, really, I tell you, the more your drawing looks complete. And my other drawing that I did, I focused more on the drawing part. This one I was focusing more on the hot air balloon. And then I don't know why, I always like to add mountains in the background. We don't have any mountains around here, but it's always kind of nice to have something with a little bit, oops different scenery. If you want to add some clouds up here, you can. And then you can finish this drawing any way you want, like I said. Um, I recommend that if you're going to paint it with some watercolors, you might want to outline it first with crayon, like a black crayon or any color crayon, um, or oil pastel, if you have those. You probably don't have a china marker. This is a china marker. This is kind of like, I would say, the artist's crayon. And um, I have kind of a love-hate relationship with these. Um, in fact, I can tell it was by my light and it's a little soft. But this is one of those that you have to pull down and pull the tape, the paper off. And so that kind of makes it an interesting tool to use. But I would use this to outline. But why you'd want to use um, like a crayon or a um, oil pastel is that when you do go to color, it traps your paint in a section so it won't bleed out all over the place. Now you can do it without it and just paint, but you will find that you wanna let things dry or things will just kind of run into each other. And either way, it's gonna look great. So that's one way, and I'm not gonna paint today, but you can um, 
I know you know how to paint. I did finish this a little bit with um, some colored pencil too. So, you know, anything, any way you finish it would be gorgeous, I'm sure. So I'm gonna go flip, flip um, gears a tiny bit and show you this one that I focused in on more of the drawing portion. So for this one, I really went for it with the drawing. I decided to make a really complete detailed drawing. And um, if you know how to do the hot air balloons, this one is, is not difficult. So I'll show you how I started. Um, you always start with everything that's most near, closest to you. So I started with this hot air balloon first. Then if, what do you think I did next? I did the other hot air balloons. And I, made, I had one that was kind of layered over here. So I'll just show you. So I'm gonna take another piece of paper here. I took my lid, same lid from the other paper. This is a bigger paper. You'd want a bigger paper probably, or you'd want smaller lids if you're doing it on a smaller paper. You can move this around anywhere you want. Maybe this time I do it over here. Same process. You're gonna outline just to there and then draw your top of your balloon and then stop. Then plan out how you're gonna have other things. So I have these other lids that I just found in our drawer of lids. So I like the idea of having one overlapped. So I'm not tracing here on the balloon because this one is most forward. So I'm going to go around and stop here. And then I have to imagine that it's going to come out here. So I'm going to just kind of make my little line here, my little line here, and then go across. And I might do another small one kind of, maybe I'll do it up higher over here. Again, just doing around the sides here. And then going kind of curve down, curve down and across, and then maybe another tiny one over here. Three, four, five, doesn't matter how many balloons you do. And then you know the same thing. You would want to start by doing your line straight, maybe do straight on everybody. Oops, that's not so straight. I don't care. I'm not worrying about being a perfectionist get your straight lines. Then on the large one, you're gonna have space to do two curves on either side. One, two, one, two. The, this one, you probably could. You're just gonna to have to kind of like fit it in. And if it runs into the side there, that's okay. You just kind of make it work. And that kind of like that. And this one, I would just do one on each side. I think it'd be too hard to cram it in unless you're really good and you've got time to really make some some super details. Once you have those, again, you decide how you pattern or you do your um, designs. This one I did the traditional kind of curvy. I just kind of each one went a little bit wider. This one I did a little bit of a pattern like the first balloon. I did the zigzaggy one here. Um, this one I did the where you can kind of almost do some diamonds in there if you wanted to. And this one I just did it, repeated it repeated it a couple of times. So I'm not gonna do that part because I know you know how to do it. But same thing, you hot air balloons, if they're in the air, they have people in them. So you gotta get that basket down there. I make this basket a little narrower so I have room for more of the drawing. I'm gonna switch pencils. So you get your baskets in there. And then definitely once you get your baskets in there, pattern your baskets. You know, some people like to do just some simple straight lines. Maybe you want to do them across too. Maybe you want to do diagonals. Whatever you want for your basket. Or you could do the one I did, showed you before. And then of course you have to put people or dogs. If you notice I put, this one has only a dog flying the balloon. This one has a person and a dog. I probably could have added another person, but I was getting a little lazy. But this drawing, the next part, if you notice in this one, I didn't even point it out. I have kind of a village down here, lots of trees, but I also put in a little water area. And once I get this painted um, or colored, I'm not sure what I'll do, um, I put in a couple little boats and some water just to add another element to my landscape. So I'm gonna show you how to do that too. I'm gonna start with just a simple landline, same. And again, drawing a house, anywhere, house and a tree or a couple houses and trees. So start with my square. And these are seriously the simplest little houses, but anything that's close is gonna have the most detail. So this house right here, maybe I'm gonna add a little section of something else, like they could have a little garage here. Might do a little sidewalk coming off here. Might have my driveway out here. 
and then I would probably add some extra details. Then how, then trees, I'm doing just simple symbol trees, bubble trees, maybe a little bit of a um, evergreen kind of um, triangle type tree. And if you don't wanna draw it like this, just draw some simple triangles too. Sometimes that can be just a nice look too. Just put some simple triangles. So already that looks like kind of busy. And maybe I do another little house over here. Might even do like one that has like another section that is a door here. And maybe I do another door here. Maybe I do a circle window up here. Some windows, I can get more detail later. Show a little path. Paths are always narrow at the door and as they come closer to you, they get a little wider. That definitely helps give you the sense of space. Do some triangle trees. And these will all look a lot better once we, whoops, that's kind of a weird triangle, but you've got that down there. They'll look better once everything's colored in. And then I'm gonna make another land line about halfway through your house. And those lines don't have to be perfectly straight because the land is never perfectly straight. And then I always think it's nice to add at least two rows of houses. So again, getting that in there. I might even add just more trees on this land line back here because you know, trees are not all in one row you're gonna have trees all over the place in all different kinds of trees and trees are different heights so they're not all necessarily the same height so you can get some variety in there then about one more land line here and maybe this one I'm gonna to choose to do instead my water so my water is not gonna be super thick you only want maybe an inch or two so I'm gonna do like Water really, water's edges are usually pretty straight. <laughs> Rondo's probably seeing somebody walking by. Um, and then, so this is gonna be my water area. And I might show it that it's water so I don't forget by even just adding a couple of little boats. And I'm gonna put a little simple boat here and I'm just doing the sides. I'm not drawing the bottom because the bottom is underwater. So I might just put a little wavy line over there. little wavy line and then just a few little waves will help me remember that this is some water and you could put other things you could put a jet ski you could put somebody skiing that would be awesome um, I'm not gonna skip that detail but a lot of times around water's edges um, there are a lot of trees so I might put on the other side lots of oops, I'm gonna go back to my triangles a lot of different trees and that's what I did on this one here I kind of did a whole water line of trees and um, maybe even a little cottage or two because that can happen and then um, if I let's say I filled that in then you can decide if you want to do some type of mountain in the background I like my trees like this better and I'm telling you these are like scribbly little trees I'm not being super neat about them but they can be kind of fun if you were super neat by them I'm sure your drawing would actually be way better than mine and now I'm gonna just do some like soft mountains in the background. While mountains are huge, when you're looking at a huge space, it's kind of nice if you don't go too close to the top because then you've got, you feel like the space is very vast when the mountains aren't huge. Um, you don't feel like you're as close to them. So you feel like this stuff is closer and then you've got your, you know, enough space to do something in the sky. Cause right now the sky is pretty important in this cause you have your hot air balloons in the sky. So anyway, that is a, a quick version of this drawing and I hope you have fun with this one because I had fun I had a lot of fun with this and I like I said um, adding some color you can add color with anything you can do this project with any materials you have at home so I hope you enjoy the day and I hope that you um, get a chance to draw some hot air balloons we'll see you later